Hi everyone, if you want to know how I maintain this dual Rio 240, that's including water changes, the filtration, lighting duration, all that sort of stuff, please hang around at the end and enjoy. Hi guys and girls, Jordy Scaper here and welcome to my adventures in autoscaping. Today's video, what I want to talk about is this Dual Rio 240 and how I maintain and care for it, including the fish, the plants, lighting, filtration. I'll go through as much as I can. What I'm going to say in this video, it's just on my experience. The equipment I use is what I choose to use and it's what I've learned over the years. So it's not gospel what I do. Um, but this works for me and it seems to be doing okay so I'm just going to pass on what I've learned to yourselves and hopefully get something from it. I'll just briefly run through what I do on a weekly basis to help maintain and care for the tank plants and the fish. Um, starting with the lighting. So lighting I have on a timer for seven hours that's every day. They come on at three o'clock and they go off at 10 p.m. They're not high intensity, high intensity? <laughs> They're not high intensity because I'm not injecting CO2, so there's no demand for high lighting. And I prefer the lower lighting levels, the lower wattage, because it prevents algae, which is a major thing. And it seems to do the trick for the plants, which are all easy category plants. Well, the majority are. And they seem to be doing the trick. Filtration wise, I'm running two filters on this and that gives us a turnover of around 10 times an hour, which is great. And one of the main reasons I like this is because of the circulation. Circulation is really important. I found that over the years. The two filters I've got here are doing the trick. One's an ORZ Biomoss. I've done a bit of a review on that one on the channel if you want to check that out. And the other one is a JBL filter. Both good filters. Um, had no problems with them and like I said doing a great job of the filtration. One is just mainly for the circulation the GBL and I just have like floss filter in there for polishing the water and the Oase filter is filled with Sera Ciparax I think it is Sera Ciparax and that's the biological media and I've used that for years and it's really really good so the canister is packed with that and that is all a biological filtration for me, as well as the plants. Okay, another thing I do is feeding the fish. I just feel, feed, <laughs> I just feed the fish small amounts every day using a good quality dried fish food. In this case, I use, I use Denali Neon and Co Booster, so it's specifically for neons tetras, small tetras and good quality food. I feed them now actually when I've been fed. So just a small amount. Fish seem to love it. Get stuck in. <laughs> so small amount, obviously you don't want to put loads in because there's going to be loads of, load of waste and you don't want that in the tank obviously. Keep your water nice and clear. So just a small amount once a day seems to do the trick. Fish are growing good, fish are nice and healthy, they're swimming around, active, so great stuff. I'd highly recommend that food, Denley foods are brilliant, so that's the dried food. The heat I set at 24 degrees Celsius and the reason I do that is because the fish, the fish are the priority in all these fish that you have different varieties of tetra can manage at 24 degrees. So that's the higher the temperatures, the more trouble with our lovely friend, algae. Nah. So keep it at the lower end. That's, that's my advice. So, Okay, probably the most important thing I do with this tank, and I do it with all my tanks, is the water changes. I do, at present, two large water changes a week. And by large, I mean 60, 70% of the water. Once in a week, I just do a pure water change. The second one is all the maintenance, the cleaning, as well as the water change what I've finished. So maintenance wise, when it comes to water change, first thing I do is clean all the glass. The Denali Cleanator, 
or clean it all sponge. I use that and I just clean all the glass, get rid of that algae off the glass so it releases into the water column. I disturb as much as I can the plants, just wave my hands about above the sand and things like that. And that disturbs all the detritus gathering on the bottom between the plants again into the water column. The idea is when you take the water out, you're going to get rid of as much of that as you can. Or when you're disturbing it, it's going to go into your filters. So the filters are still running. Clean all the glass. I clean a difficult part, which is a good tip. Um, a lot of aquascapers do, and I got this tip a while back, is use a credit type card, a plastic card, and that gets in between the glass and the sand, and you just clean the algae that gathers up there. Great little tool. I also, I've got a skip, skimmer here. That's an Aheim skimmer. I take the skimmer out and clean that regular as well, usually once, twice a week, because it's only got a small sponge and it gets clogged straight away. So I do clean that regular as well, because it does a wonderful job. Wonderful? I never say wonderful. Isn't that strange? <laughs> wonderful. It does a brilliant job. That's something I would say. It does a brilliant job of keeping the surface nice and clear. And there's obviously advantages of that for light penetration and less oily scum. It just looks horrible. So the water movement producing oxygen and things like that. So there's lots of advantages having a good skimmer. So the yeah, back gets cleaned as well. I've got my little water change system, which there is a video on if you want to check that out as well. There's a, a more detailed video of how I do the water changes on this tank. Because you don't want to be using buckets, not in large water changes. It's horrible. Snaps you back. Not good. So I would highly recommend this system. I think a lot, a lot of people use this way of changing water now. And it, honest, it's a game changer. And it'll help you stick in the hobby more. <laughs> defeat algae, defeat buckets. You'll be a long time hobbyist. <laughs> We've got rid of all that. So now I turn the filters off, turn the heater off, and I start draining the water. While I'm draining the water, I use a smaller hose and a bucket this time, but I don't take loads of water out to suck, siphon out all the detritus that's lying about. You can actually see it when it's lying about and you're just best to take that off. The least amount of scum, fish poo, detritus, dirt, whatever it is, the least amount on the sand, the gravel, the better. And obviously I mentioned before, between the plants, you disturb all that so you can get all that out. And that's part of your water change. Rather than just doing a water change and leaving it. Disturb as much, I think that's the gist of it. Disturb as much as you can, get all the detritus floating around, then remove it. Once the water's drained 60, 70%, it's time to fill it back up. So I use my little system again to fill about using a pump. And that pumps the water from your kitchen sink into the tank. Fresh, dechlorinated water. It's important that you dechlorinate as well. I use seed king prime, which is great. And it lasts, lasts a good while as well, because you need a very small amount because it's very strong, potent. So it's, it's a good one to buy. So dechlorinate water is coming in, filling. While it's filling, I use the Oase filter. I clean that regular every week because it's got a pre-filter in, which is a breeze to use, really easy to use. So you just take the pre-filter sponges out, clean them and put them back in. Or if you've got spare, take the dirty ones off, put the clean ones on, and you can go away, clean the dirty ones anytime you want. That's what I do. <laughs> Bit lazy, but I do it. <laughs> so yeah, we'll clean the pre-filter on that one. The other filter, the JBL, I just tend to watch what the flow's like. If I see any signs of the flow going down, I'll clean the filter then. It's usually once every two, two months. That usually does the trick and I've had no problems with that. So that's what I do with that filler. But the Oase is a doddle. So once the tank's filled, that's when I add my liquid fertilizers. I don't fertilize every day. I tend to go lean dosing. Um, I am at the present anyways, and that's working for me. I use a pretty strong fertilizer, and I just like to say, if I'm doing two water changes a week, it gets dosed twice a week, immediately after the water change. I use these products here from Prodibio. It's BioVert Plus, BioVert Plus, sorry, and BioVert Ultimate. One's pretty much your trace elements and one contains a bit more iron for your plants. So that's the reason I use yours. And to be honest, the plant growth has been great. So I think I'll continue to use this. I really like this stuff. It's really strong. 
the dosage is just a small dosage, like I say, twice a week. So you're gonna get your money's worth as well. So nice, nice, as far as fertilizer goes, it's nice. It's a good fertilizer. Okay. Lastly, what I do is clean the glass. And I use white vinegar in a spray bottle to clean the glass. And that's, I've done that for years and it, it does a trick. Obviously make sure I don't get it in the actual water column itself. But even if you did, it's not going to cause drastic harm. So a little squirt to clean that glass, streak free finish, it's great. So I always finish with the glass clean, clean the cupboards, make sure I always tickety boo. Filters are switched on, filters are running, fertilizers in, fresh water, all good. So we'll cover the lighting, seven hours of lighting. I have a surface skimmer, make sure that's cleaned regular and it keeps the surface nice and clean. And obviously it's got the added benefit to doing that. Filtration, 10 times turnover. Feeding the fish, just a small amount, once a day, every day. And the most important one, two large water changes at around 60, 70% twice a week. Liquid ferts, twice a week after the water change. So that's pretty much it. That's, that's what I do and that's how I care and look after this tank and I think the results speak for themselves. This tank's been running for, I think, going on three months now. Yes, growth is slow, but the raw slow growing plants, easy cattery plants, don't need CO2 injection. Although, like all plants, CO2 injection will help improve the general plant growth and the plant health. But as a low tech system, I'm quite impressed. I've had no really bad algae and Plant growth is good, fish health is brilliant, which is obviously one of the most important aspects. And I put it down to the water changes, two good water changes a week, good maintenance, really helps with the tank. So it, you have got to put the work in, you can't just set it up and leave it, you have got to put the work in, but if you enjoy it as well, enjoy your maintenance, enjoy your water changes, make it as easy for yourself as you can. And hopefully the system I'll show you how I do my water changes will help and it'll not put you off doing your water changes. I just blast my tunes. I'm a bit of a metalhead. I bang my tunes on and then bang, get my water changes on. I've got three tanks at the moment and I quite enjoy maintenance day. So is that sad? I don't know, but I think it's part of the hobby. You just gotta learn to do it because it's gotta be done. And if you want a nice tank, good results, healthy fish, it's a must. So that's a wrap guys. I hope you get something from this video. We've covered everything and I hope you have good results with your tanks. And even if you're getting a few little hints and tips out of this video, I've done my job and I'm happy with that. On that note, if you do like this video, if you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button. What that does, a like is really important because it helps you get found on YouTube, especially when being a smaller channel. The more likes you've got and things like that, it really does help you out in being found on a search, on a Google search, on a YouTube search. So please, please hit that like button. Comment if you want, love getting comments, ask any questions, I read all my comments and answer all the comments. So, and if you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button because I've got lots and lots planned. I'm in the process of decorating one of my rooms and it's gonna be an office stroke gallery. So once that's done, I'm not really excited about it, it's just taking a bit of time to get it done and plan. So there'll be a new tank, new tanks in there. And it's going to be a gallery really good for the content so i'm excited about it and hopefully i can create some really good content for you guys so on that note i'll let you go thanks for watching see you later bye